So, welcome to today's lecture. In the previous lecture, we had started looking at the graphs of functions. We looked at the graph of a constant function. Let us go to the next step of uh, looking at a function defined by uh, y equal to mx. So, or f of x is equal to mx. So, f of x is denoted by y. So, one normally writes it as y equal to m of x, where m is a fixed real number. So, one would like to know what is the graph of this function. How do you visualize the graph of this function as a set of points on the plane? Uh, re remember, we had uh, done an association. Uh, every ordered pair uh, x comma y was identified with a point on the plane uh, with x axis, y axis as the coordinates as x comma y. So, let us try to identify uh, what is this set, the graph of uh, the function f as a set of points on the plane R2. So, for this let us first observe that for x is equal to 0, mx is equal to 0. So, the point 0, 0 belongs to the graph of the function. So, uh, the graph of the function uh, includes the origin 0. So, let us look at any point, uh, any line in the plane which passes through the origin because origin is on the graph. And uh, if uh, in our equation, in our uh, function x is equal to 1, then 1 comma m also is a point on the graph. So, our graph is going to pass through two points. Let us test the possibility that our graph is a line passing through the point 0, 0 and the point p which is 1 comma m. So, let us call this line as m. And let us uh, take any uh, general point uh, q on this line and find out its coordinates. If q is a point, then on this line, this line, so let us take q, the q coordinate, let us say the coordinates of q are x comma y. We want to compute y in terms of x. So, uh, let us look at these two triangles q, c, a and p, a, o. So, uh, what we have done is, I have drawn a line here parallel to the x axis and this is a line which is uh, parallel to the y axis and they meet at the point B. So, let us look at the triangles uh, Q, C, O and uh, the triangle P, A, O. So, this small brown triangle and uh, this big triangle. So, these two triangles claim is that these two triangles are similar because this angle is common to them and uh, this angle is 90, this angle is 90. So, these two triangles are um, similar. Since these two triangles are similar, the sides must be in the proportion. So, that means if I look at the ratio P A by A O, that ratio is M. So, that must be equal to the ratio Q C divided by C O and that ratio is Y by X because uh, Q has coordinates x, y. So, uh, from this we get that y must be equal to m x. So, y must be equal to m of x. Thus, every point on the line has got coordinates x comma m x or equivalently we can say that this is also this identifies with the graph of the function because of the unique association of every point um, uh, the ordered pair x comma y with the point with coordinates x comma y in the plane. So, this shows that the line L is the graph of the function y equal to m of x. We can go slightly uh, ahead uh, and look at uh, the function which is given by y equal to m x plus c. So, if we compare it with the previous function, this is just uh, y equal to m x plus c. So, that means what for every value of x, whatever was m x, c is added to it. That means, y is the y coordinate is being translated by c units. So, uh, we can just uh, look at the dynamic aspect of geometry and say that the graph of uh, this function, this function is also called linear function. So, the graph of this function is nothing but it is shift the graph of the line y equal to m x um, shifted along the y axis by c units. So, uh, let us just have a look at the graph. So, this is the this is a line 
y equal to mx plus c. So, if we drop c, this is a line y equal to mx, this is going to be parallel to this line and what we have done is we just lifted up, we have translated this graph up by the c units. So, depending on c is positive or negative, this will go up or down. So, uh, this is the graph of uh, the function y equal to mx plus c and this uh, graph is this function is called a linear function. So, it, it is given by y equal to mx plus c. So, as you have realized there are two important uh, numbers in this, one is m, other is c. This number m is called the slope of uh, the uh, linear equation or uh, geometrically the slope of the line y equal to mx plus c and c is the um, int y intercept that means the graph passes through the point 0 comma c. So, this is uh, the graph of that function y equal to uh, mx plus c. Why this m is called the slope? Uh, if you recall uh, in the previous thing, uh, in the previous picture we'll, I, uh, we looked at the point p, right. So, this was the point p. So, for this line which is y equal to mx, mx if this height is equal to m, and this distance is equal to 1, then this is a line. So, as you can see if m increases, so if m increases this line will tilt towards more towards y axis. So, the inclination of this line or one there is more slope for this line. That is why this number m indicates what is called the slope of uh, the linear equation and c is called the y intercept. So, this is called the slope intercept form of uh, the linear equation because m denotes the slope and c denotes the intercept. One can also uh, geometrically if you look at a line then uh, it, one knows that there is one and only one line passing through uh, two points uh, in the plane. So, that fact we can utilize. So, let us take two points on this line y equal to mx plus c and try to see what we can say. So, let us take x 1 y 1 and x 2 y 2 be two points on the line y equal to m x plus c. Then because these two points lie on the equation y equal to m x plus c, we must have y 1 is equal to m x 1 plus c. So, x 1 y 1 satisfies the equation y equal to m x plus c and similarly x 2 y 2 also satisfies the same equation. So, y 2 is equal to m x 2 plus c. So, from these two equations we can calculate the value of uh, m and c. Uh, one way is we can subtract uh, this equation from uh, this equation. So, c will vanish and we can calculate the value of m and put the value of m in the any one of the equations and get the value of c. So, we leave it for you to simplify and see that from these two equations if you calculate m that comes out to be y 2 minus y 1 divided by x 2 minus x 1. And the value of c in terms of x 2 y 2 x 1 y 1 is comes out to be this. So, one can write down the equation of the line y equal to m x in the form y is equal to y 2 minus y 1 divided by x 2 minus x 1 multiplied by x plus c and see the value of c as calculated above is y 1 minus y 2 minus y 1 divided by x 2 minus x 1 into x 1. So, this form of the linear equation, this form of the line is also called the two point form of the line y equal to mx plus c. The two point form, form tells you immediately what is the, uh, which are the two points through which it is passes or it can be used to write down the equation of a line passing through two points either way. And uh, you can also calculate the slope and uh, the intercept from the values of the points x 1, y 1 and x 2, y 2. So, this is uh, normally very useful in writing down uh, equations of lines. So, what we have done is we have drawn the graph of uh, a general linear equation y equal to m x plus c. Let us see how uh, linear equations or linear functions arise in the study of uh, economics, commerce and management. So, we will look at some examples in the language of economics and so on. So, let us look at the first example. It says a manufacturer of music players will like to know the following. There is a manufacturer 
who is making music players and he is interested in knowing that what will be the effect of 5% increase in the price on the demand if he increases the price of the music player by 5%, what will be the uh, effect of this on the demand when the current music player uh, price is 9000. So, at present uh, when the music player is selling for 9000 rupees per music player, if he increases the price by 5%, how much uh, will it affect the demand? So, he would like to know that. Will the effect be same if the price of the music player uh, say is 12000? See, so what we are, he is interested in is when the music player is selling for 9000 and there is an increase of 5 percent whether the demand will go up or go down. That is one question. And the second is when the music player is selling for 12000 at that price if he increases the price by 5, by 5 percent what will be the effect of this uh, on the demand of the uh, music player in the market. So, to answer these questions we have to first know how is the demand and supply related to each other. So, let us say uh, we know that the, uh, that the price uh, and demand function is related by this equation. So, that is a linear equation. So, P is the price and Q is the uh, uh, quantity demanded. So, this is related by uh, this. Okay. So, this is a uh, equation. Uh, how is that equation coming? Uh, we, we are not really at present interested in modeling. We know that uh, the manufacturer uh, says that this is a relation. So, P is the price per unit and Q is the quantity demanded. So, this is a linear equation in the variable P and Q. So, the price is a function of the demand Q. The 5 percent increase in the price at when the price is 9000 means, so what will be the increase in the price? 9000 is at present the price of the music player, 5 percent of that is 450. So, that is the increase in uh, price delta P. So, that, that means, so I also you know the delta P by delta Q, right? y 2 minus y 1 divided by x 2 minus x 1 is the slope. And for this, uh, the slope uh, is here is a linear equation with slope as minus 5. So, that means the change in uh, price divided by the change in uh, demand, which is equal to mathematically equal to the slope, is given by minus point, uh, 0 0.5. So, that means the change, if you take it on the other side, so that means. Uh, delta Q, uh, sorry uh, this is there is a mistake here. The slope is y 2 minus uh, y 1 right that is ok. So, there is a mistake here. So, that means uh, we should be dividing by. So, delta Q is delta P divided by minus 0 0.5. So, uh, when you do that, so increase is uh, delta P is 500. So, here is a typo it should be division. So, that should be division. So, forget this step. So, from here delta Q is delta P divided by minus 0 0.5. So, that is here. So, that means this is equal to minus 900. So, that means if when the music player is selling for uh, 9000 rupees, there will be a decrease in demand because delta Q is negative. That means there will be a decrease in demand by 900 units. So, now, let us uh, uh, calculate the 5 percent increase when the music player is selling for 12000. In that case, delta P is 5 percent of 12000 is 600. So, we calculate now delta Q, it is delta P divided by that uh, percentage. So, that is minus of 600 by 0 0.5 and that comes up to 1200. So, so that means, there is a decrease in demand by 12,000, uh, 1,200 units. That means, in this uh, scenario, as uh, the price of the music player goes up, any increase will make the demand, uh, will make a 
decrease in the demand. So, thus uh, in this model what we are saying is one has to analyze at each price the corresponding change in Q. At each point P value for P, if you even if the price increase or decrease is same, the value of uh, the effect on the demand is different. So, correspond, so at every point P, we have to calculate what is the change in Q. So, the question arises, can we have a number, some numerical value associated with the demand function that will measure the responsiveness of the quantity demanded for the same price change at various levels. So, there we were, what we are saying is, we are given the demand and supply function we are looking for some characteristic, some something that we can say will indicate uh, how much uh, the demand will change uh, at different price levels. So, uh, to answer this question, uh, naturally uh, we have said that the slope uh, of the linear function is not a suitable measure for this. So, if slope is not the suitable measure, what it could be? Um, another reason why the slope is not a useful uh, measure of responsiveness is that the equation demand and supply equation depends upon the units used for uh, the quantities the item being produced or demanded. Let us look at an example and uh, illustrate this. Consider uh, a price and demand function of say cement which is given by the price is equal to 500 minus 50 times Q. This is again a linear uh, price demand relation where Q is measured, uh, it is cement being sold. So, cement is sold in units, let us say it is metric tons and P is the price in rupees per metric ton. So, P is the price per uh, metric ton of the cement. So, unit for the quantity is uh, metric tons and the price is per metric ton. So, this is a relation. Now, let us suppose we change these units from metric tons to something else. So, here is a change, suppose we change the units. So, we measure Q instead of metric tons, we measure in kilograms. So, in case you do not remember, 1 ton is equal to 1000 kg and the price is measured in per kilogram. So, we want to uh, have a relation between P and Q, where P is in price per kilogram and Q is in uh, per kg. So, let us see the conversion. So, when P is 100 per ton, so it is 0.1 k, uh, rupees per kg. For 200 ton, it is 0.2 kg, 8 it will be. So, uh, Q quantity it is 8 ton that is 800 kg and for example, 6 ton it will be 6000 kg because 1 ton is equal to 1000 kg. So, once you do that, uh, we convert the relation. So, this is the price and demand equation becomes P is equal to 0.5 minus 0.00005 Q. Here Q is in kilograms and P is price per kilogram. So, this is what the equation becomes and now you see the slope here has changed to this because the units have changed, the slope has changed. Now, both the equations represent the same price and demand function. This also represents the same price and demand. The original also represents the same um, price and demand, but in different units. So, uh, that means, uh, now the slope is different. So, uh, what I am trying to emphasize is that for a linear function, slope cannot be taken as the measure of responsiveness, how uh, the price and demand will change, if one is changed, another is uh, observed. So, if a slope is not uh, the measure of responsiveness for change, what could be? So, um, it is more natural to expect that the percentage change in demand will be proportional to the percentage in price. In that case, there the unit is gone from the scenario. Once, so if you look at the percentage change in demand, a price changes from P1 to P2 
and we see the percentage demand, uh, percentage change in the price and correspondingly compute the percentage change in uh, the price uh, of the demand. So, then the two are independent, uh, the two quantities percentage does not depend upon the units. So, and it is more natural to assume that in a price demand relationship, the percentage change in demand is proportional to the percentage change in price. So, this is represented mathematically as saying delta q by q, right? If at a price q, delta q is the change, right? Price is changed by. So, delta q by q is the proportional pro change, right? So, when the units will cancel out each other. So, claim is that this should be proportional to delta p by p multiplied by 100. So, this is the percentage change in the price, this is the percentage change in the demand and we are putting a uh, hypothesis that this should be so, uh, th this should be proportional to this. So, that means what? So, that means we can, uh, if we want to remove this proportionality, that means mathematics says the proportionality constant of proportionality if it is C, then delta Q by Q is equal to delta P by P. Then that relation will hold for that constant C. And that means we can calculate C from here. So, C is equal to delta Q by Q divided by delta P by P. So, that is equal to delta Q by delta P, right? And this goes up so into P by Q. So, the constant of proportionality is the change in Q, the change in demand divided by the change in price multiplied the price at that stage and the demand at that point. This is a constant which is independent of units. This uh, constant is called the point elasticity of demand at the price P. So, this number C which is given by at a price P, we know the demand uh, price demand function we know Q and if there is a change delta Q will give you the change delta P. So, this is called the cons point elasticity of demand at the point P and is denoted by the Greek letter epsilon with a lower D that may epsilon indicates the elasticity and D denotes the demand. So, there is a price elasticity of demand defined by delta Q by delta P into P by Q. So, for a linear function, if the demand function, uh, price demand function looks like P is equal to minus A minus B Q, right? So, that is uh, the price demand function. Then we know that delta P by delta Q, okay? is nothing but minus b that is a slope actually. So, that gives the, for a linear function the coefficient of elasticity is nothing but minus 1 over b p by q, right. So, which is a scalar that indicates ratio of percentage increase or decrease in price at price p, right. So, that indicates that if there is, a, this is a ratio of the percentage increase or decrease at a price P to the percentage and decrease in demand at that price. So, this is the coefficient of uh, elasticity for a linear model of price and demand linear model, okay. So, where the price and demand is this, okay, P is equal to A minus B Q. Right. So, let us make a observation that this number P is positive, price is always positive, quantity is demanded is positive, okay. The number B uh, in uh, the equation is positive, okay. So, in the linear equation, demand and supply equation B is positive. So, all this quantity being positive, epsilon D is a negative quantity. So, it lies between minus infinity and 0. So, this is only says that uh, epsilon d 
coefficient of constant of elasticity is always uh, uh, negative. So, depending on uh, what is the value of uh, epsilon d, the, it will. So, we'll let us just look at a few cases. Let us look at case 1 when epsilon d is between minus infinity and minus 1, it is negative. So, as epsilon d moves away from minus 1, what will happen? As it moves away, the demand becomes more and more responsive to the price, right, because it is. Um, is equal to delta t by. So, keep in mind what is the coefficient of elasticity. It is minus 1 over b, p by q. Okay. So, as it becomes more and more uh, towards minus 1, that means what? That means uh, b is fixed, right. If it has to uh, become uh, towards uh, more and more negative quantity, that means Q should become smaller than uh, P. So, demand uh, so that indicates that Q should become uh, bigger than P at a rate much faster. So, uh, so it becomes demand becomes more and more responsive to the price. So, for example, 5 percent increase in a price at minus 2 will be will give you 10 percent decrease in the demand. Okay. Okay, if f, this is 2, so that ratio uh, is uh, equal to minus 2, so it is double. So, uh, thus the region where in minus 1 to 1, one says demand is very elastic, it is more responsive, so one says demand is very elastic. Uh, when it is between minus 1 and 0, this is a situation when the price change is less than percentage change in the price, because it is between minus 1 and 0. So, that means the demand is inelastic, it does not really affect the price much. And uh, so, this is the situation when it is on this side, right, then it is uh, uh, very responsive and it is not responsive at all, this is called the, this point equal to minus 1 is called the unit elastic. Finally, uh, when it is equal to minus 1, as we have said, it is a unit elastic change in price. So, um, for a linear model of price and demand, we have tried to define uh, a notion called coefficient of elasticity or constant of elasticity for price and demand. And uh, as it turns out, for any linear uh, demand and supply function, this is always a negative quantity. So, when it, the value is less than minus 1, it is very ela, uh, elastic, when it is between minus 1 and 0, it is highly inelastic and at the minus 1, it is uh, unit elastic. So, we will continue the study of uh, such things more in the next lecture.